Howdy folks, Jambariki here. The filmmaking technique of combining animation with live action had been done before Who Framed Roger Rabbit, but mainly for short films and brief sequences in movies. Who Framed Roger Rabbit ambitiously decided to take this technique and use it for a feature-length story, which was a big deal at the time, and it set a landmark for cinematic history. But what do I think of this movie? Who Framed Roger Rabbit is a crime comedy. It's set in a world where cartoon characters are real and serve as entertainers for humans. One day, cartoon Roger Rabbit finds out that his wife Jessica is having an affair with Toontown owner Marvin Acme. The next day, Marvin Acme is found dead and Roger is the prime suspect. So Roger turns to alcoholic private investigator Eddie Valiant, who used to solve toon cases with his brother before he was killed by a toon. To make matters worse for Roger, the sinister Judge Doom wants to track Roger down and execute him without trial. Can Eddie uncover the truth behind Marvin Acme's death and will he be able to put aside the prejudice he has for Toons for the case? This movie is a celebration of the art of animation. It affectionately creates a world devoted to the golden age of cartoons. Everything about the film is lovingly crafted to pay tribute to classic animated characters and the industry they came from. Little nods, references, and cameos make the film very detailed, resulting in a more than interesting viewing experience. This gives the film an endearing tone because you can tell that the filmmakers really love and respect cartoons. They know the power of cartoons and how their charm lies in their comedic genius. The film is laced with wisdoms and philosophies that encourage the notion that humor is a part of human character, a way of dealing with tragedy and hardships, that comedy is a weapon to fight against your troubles. This is what makes the film so poignant and warm. It's a love letter to cartoons written with sweet sincerity. Underneath this movie's wackiness, though, there's a deep layer of intellectual satire. You see, this movie's universe is actually an allegory for racial segregation. Now, some of you are probably thinking, hang on, Jambariki, you're just looking too deep into this movie. How can a film about a cartoon rabbit be about racism? Let me explain. The Toons are divided from the humans and forced to live in their own neighborhood. There's a club for humans only where Toons are servants and performers. Still don't believe me? The story is set in 1947, a time when the Jim Crow laws divided races in America. And if that's still not enough evidence, get this. The movie was based on a graphic novel that apparently made the racial allegory a bigger focus. This level of depth adds a subtext to the movie that makes it thought-provoking as well as funny. Watching the film with these facts in mind creates a very intellectual experience. What I respect about this allegory is that it's executed in a subtle undertone rather than a heavy-handed commentary. It lets the audience read into the movie subtext while providing entertainment. What about the mystery aspect of this film, though? Well, it's pretty exciting watching Eddie dive deeper and deeper and deeper into what's going on, as red herrings are planted throughout the narrative to keep us guessing. Who is behind all this? Who do we trust? It's all very thrilling. However, as much as I love this movie, I will admit that the truth behind what's going on is kind of convoluted. It's a lot of information to take in, and following what's happening made my head do somersaults. It's not too complicated to understand, but it's a bit too detailed. Maybe it's just me, but I felt like what was really happening could have been trimmed down to something less meticulous and overwritten. I'm going to give four points to the content of this film. Roger Rabbit is a very lovable character. He's crazy, wacky, and very funny. He can be really witty and charming. At the same time, he has many human qualities that make him believable and endearing. He expresses his emotions loudly, whether he's happy or sad, and he has a loving respect towards other cartoons and their craft. I can imagine him annoying some people because he's so wild and loud, but I find him to be really sweet and hilarious. Eddie Valiant is a broken down man. Ever since he lost his brother and partner, he's been drinking heavily, lost his dignity, and no longer enjoys his job. It's heartbreaking watching him fall apart, but it's this case that slowly helps him to regain his sense of humor, pride, and respect towards tunes. It's also very funny watching him get grumpy around crazy, loud cartoons. <laughs> 
Jessica Rabbit serves as the film's femme fatale. There's something dangerous and exciting about her. We're not sure if we should trust her. However, as the film goes along, we learn more about her and slowly we understand her actions and respect her ingenuity. There's also something really adorable about her romance with Roger. She loves him for his comedic talent, which ties into the film's celebration of comedy. Josh Doom seems like a straight and professional fellow, but there's something shady about him. I won't spoil the twist behind him, but it'll totally surprise you, and people watching the film again will notice subtle clues about his character that'll help indicate what's revealed later on. Dolores is Eddie's love interest in the film. She's obviously fed up of Eddie's bad habits, but you can tell that deep down, she loves him. She has a really lovely relationship with Eddie that's framed like a classic film noir romance. In addition, Loads and loads of famous cartoon characters make cameos in the film. Bugs Bunny, Mickey Mouse, Daffy Duck, Donald Duck, Yosemite Sam, Betty Boop, and many more. However, don't expect them to constantly appear or stay in the film for long. Like I said, they're just cameos. It's still awesome seeing our favorite tunes share the screen with each other, though. I'm going to give five points to the characters in this film. This film ambitiously pushed the bar for the live action slash animation technique. It proved that this technique could achieve loads of on-screen feats. Many elements are used to help us believe that the animated characters are sharing the same environment as the live action actors. The actors put on convincing performances, puppetry and practical effects are used to support the illusion, plus effects company Industrial Light and Magic added dimension and lighting to the characters to make them seem 3D and organic. The carrot animation itself was directed by renowned animator Richard Williams. His fingerprints are all over the cartoons in this movie. Each character is highly expressive with a wide range of emotions. Williams gives many human qualities to the cartoons that help us resonate and sympathize with them. At the same time, they still have a wild, crazy energy to them, a staple of classic cartoon acting. Williams' work in this film is a wonderful showcase of the animation principles. Characters bounce, strike, Stretch and squash. Each action is expertly staged with an understanding of comedy. Most importantly for this film, characters react brilliantly against the live action actors through a cleverly paced response timing. I'm going to give five points to the animation in this film. Charles Fleischer voices Roger Rabbit. His voice has the familiarity of recognizable cartoon characters, but also the originality of his own imagination. The personality he creates for Roger Rabbit is sincere, funny, and likable. Please, don't worry. Whatever you say, yes ma'am, aye aye sir, okie dokie, why I'll take care of him like he was my own brother. Bob Hoskins is outstanding as Eddie Valiant. He creates a sympathetic, human and realistic character to contrast against the wacky cartoon characters around him. He draws from his theatre experience to help us believe that he's really reacting to the tunes. Hoskins honestly loved this film and understood how integral his performance would be to achieving the illusion. You said you'd never take another two cases. What'd you have? A change of heart? Nothing's changed. Somebody's made a patsy out of me, and I'm gonna find out why. <laughs> Hold still, will ya? Does this help? Yeah, thanks. Do you mean to tell me that you could have taken your hand out of that cuff at any time? No, not at any time. Only when it was funny. <laughs> An uncredited Kathleen Turner provides the voice of Jessica Rabbit. She sounds sultry, saucy, and sexy, perfectly capturing the traits of a femme fatale. No, 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 I love my husband. You've got me all wrong. You don't know how hard it is being a woman looking the way I do. Yeah, well... You don't know how hard it is being a man looking at a woman looking the way you do. I'm not bad. I'm just drawn that way. Christopher Lloyd plays Judge Doom. It's certainly one of his more subdued performances. He uses subtle acting methods to help suggest the truth behind his character. This makes the twist believable and gives second time viewers something to notice. Is this man removing evidence from the scene of a crime? Ah, uh, no, Judge Doom. Uh, Valiant here was just picking it up for you. Weren't you, Eddie? And 
hand it over. Sure. It's number one seller. I see working for a tune has rubbed off on you. I wasn't working for a tune. I was working for Ake Maroon. Yes, we talked to Mr. Maroon. He told us the rabbit became quite agitated when you showed him the pictures. The rabbit said one way or another, he and his wife are going to be happy. Joanne Cassidy plays Dolores. You can feel her frustration towards Eddie, but at the same time, there's a look of love in her eyes. Listen to me. Look, I want you to go out. I want you to buy yourself a new swimsuit. Because you and me are going to Catalina. I'm on the verge of wrapping up this case. No, you're not, Eddie. That's what I came to tell you. I stopped by probate. Maroon's not after Toontown like you thought. It's Cloverleaf that wants to get their hands on Toontown. They put in the highest bid. And unless Mr. Acne's will shows up by midnight tonight, Cloverleaf is going to own Toontown. What? In addition, this film is packed with loads of iconic voice actors in its cast, including Mel Blanc, Mae Questel, June Foray, Jim Cummings, Frank Welker, Nancy Cartwright, and many more. I love the idea of some of the greatest voice actors getting together to bring cartoon characters to life. I'm going to give five points to the acting in this film. The music score for this movie is like a chameleon. It adapts itself to whatever's on screen, it camouflages itself in the background while supporting the movie. Whether it's using sultry jazz to capture the film noir feel, or zany show tunes to go along with the cartoon antics. But I do feel like a little spice is missing, that little something to make my heart pound and my eyes widen. Don't get me wrong, it's a solid effort, it's a really good music score, but it just needed that extra punch there. I'm going to give four points to the music in this film. To conclude, while I wouldn't say that Who Framed Roger Rabbit is a godlike, perfect, flawless masterpiece, I definitely recognise its technical achievements and consider it to be a wonderful classic movie. It's executed with so much charm, humour and imagination. I highly recommend it if you're a fan of cartoons and film noir. Who Framed Roger Rabbit has gained a total of 23 points, which translates to 4.5 cartoon strawberries out of 5. If you enjoyed such films as Cool World or Space Jam, then I think you'll love this movie. So, Christmas is coming up next on Jamboreeka Reviews, so the next two episodes are going to be very festive, starting with Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer the movie, the film with John Goodman as Santa, not the Rankin Bass movie. <laughs> Cheerio, folks.